Hey everybody, it's Bill here. Uh, this is another frequently asked questions video. I wanted to talk about a couple of things dealing with racking slides and uh, how some of them are more difficult than others and um, actually mention a couple like little common myths like dry firing and, and getting hand strength and things like that since that's something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, those of you that know me personally and those of you I've shot with or you know maybe we've worked on some projects together in the past or whatever you know that I was involved um, a while back in a near fatal accident um, involving a pretty substantial issue dealing with the right side of my body where uh, I had an object that uh, basically nearly took my life um, but has left some pretty bad residual effects. Um, I have a lot of damage to my, my radial nerve. I have a bunch of titanium in this side of my body and a lot of scar tissue and things like that that uh, impact my, my right hand's ability to, to work as good as it used to or as good as my left hand. So about three years ago, I had to become a left-handed shooter. I'm right eye dominant, but had to become a left-handed shooter, which was a massive challenge for me. Because in pistol shooting, especially things like IDPA or um, you know any kind of practical pistol, you're still using two arms, you're still using two hands. You will do those right uh, strong hand, weak hand exercises and things like that. In fact, I usually take the penalty in IDPA um, for shooting weak hand because it's, it's for me, it's just, frankly, it's not safe because I have uh, issues with fine motor control. You'll see me be able to do some things and manipulate some, some things on the firearms that uh, don't necessarily require fine motor control, but they still are uh, typically painful for me. So I wanted to, to show you some of the ways that uh, this can be applicable, especially if you have like um, a wife who may want to shoot or something like that. Um, you know, somebody who's not used to racking a pistol slide, and, and they can be quite challenging for somebody who, who doesn't do it day in and day out. Um, and I also wanted to talk about some ways I'm able to mitigate that by uh, mechanically. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you is, well, I'll show you mitigating it mechanically. This is a 9mm, this is a 1911 Rock Island, um, and this particular pistol, and it is safety checked by the way, um, <clears throat> This particular pistol uh, only has like a seven pound recoil spring in it because I'm shooting 125 power factor ammo as slow as you can go, um, you know, lead round nose ammo out of it. And uh, one thing you won't really get to see me do too many times is be able to grab the back of the slide and actually pull it back and, and let it go. And it, you just, <laughs> yeah, I even struggle with that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> So, being that I have some reduced grip and things like that, uh, one of the ways that I show, uh, particularly like women, like my wife, if, if she has a she has a pistol and it's hard for her to rack it, and, you know, she's not going to carry a five inch nineteen eleven. It's just not her style. In fact, her weapon of choice is actually this little Sig P nine thirty eight. Um, a lot of times, the smaller the gun, the harder they are to rack. Though we know that, you know, it's physics. It's got to be able to. Uh, sustain that opposite and equal reaction. So if you have a shorter period of time to to do that with a spring, you need a harder spring to be able to, to slow that slide down. So one of the things that I show her is an easier way to rack the gun, so to get it back into battery. So right now I'm using my weak hand, well my now weak hand, which is my right hand, and I'm using that up against the butt of the gun, keeping my finger off the trigger of course, and I'm going to grab this back here by the serrations, being very, very careful not to get my hand stuck in this ejection port because that's extremely painful. Um, and where most of you will, um, and I could probably do this weak hand, like strong hand, uh, most of you will pull this back, let it go, and uh, be good to go. But what I've found is easy is if you keep the muzzle down range, and that's absolutely key for this because a lot of people's natural instinct is not to keep the muzzle down range if you're going to do a two-handed rack. But how I've taught like my sister, my wife, you know, a couple people that maybe aren't new, maybe they're new shooters and they have a hard time pulling that slide back. Um, 
is I'll have them do a two-handed rack where I'm, I'm actually using both arms, so I'm kind of splitting up the, uh, you know, the amount that I would need to squeeze on the slide and pull back, you know, with my with my arm that's you know, not as good. Um, but I will actually grab the frame, grab the slide, and do a push pull. You can see that this arm is going this way and this arm is going this way. I can actually use both arms to rack the slide. Um, again, you got to be careful to keep your finger out of the ejection port, or else, you know, that's going to hurt. And you also have to keep your hand off the finger off the trigger, obviously. But this is one way that you can mitigate, you know, having a tough slide. And uh, I'll show you here with her SIG. Let me just safety check it here. It is clear. Um, I would do the same thing. I would keep the muzzle pointed down range. I would grab the frame, keeping my finger off the trigger, grab it anywhere by the serrations, whatever's comfortable. And even for her, I told her, go ahead and grab it by the sights. It doesn't matter. Um, keep your hand, and again, the smaller the gun, the harder it is, keep your hand out of that ejection port because that's going to hurt. And you can use a push-pull motion. Um, and that allows her to rack it because if if I if I give this gun to her and I watch her try to rack it like this, she's struggling with it to get it back, you know, back all the way. And this this gun's not hard to do that on, but some of them are very difficult. I'll give you an example of that. This is a compact. That's another thing that you you'll commonly see me do is using my body as part of the the racking process. It's not probably recommended to do it at the range, but in my in my basement here, when I'm working on stuff, I, I do it all the time. Um, when I know a gun's clear, I'll use my body to to actually rack it. And, and again, always keeping your finger off that trigger. You know this. If you're watching my videos, you're you're no dummy. Um, so that's another time. Front serrations can really come into play, but again, you got to keep your hand away from the muzzle, or else you're on the hospital side of the gun, and that's that's not where you want to be. Um, like this this gun has a very hard hard recoil spring because of it being so small. Now mine's a little bit weakened; it's it's pretty weak actually. But if this was full power, this would be pretty hard to rack. So I'm going to do the same thing: grab the frame, grab the slide, and push pull with both. And actually, keeping my if, and this is this is a safe direction by the way, keeping my hand against my body while pointing it down range with my injury allows me to be able to rack this. So you'll see, you may see me mitigate this sometimes and kind of laugh and be like, why does that guy do that? He's so weird. But it's it's something that I, I have to do. Um, you know, and I, I don't think I'll ever be able to shoot right-handed again just because of the the fine motor control that you obviously all know trigger controls everything as well as recoil control and, and my, my grip is not nearly as strong with my right hand as it, as it is with my left. Um, speaking of that, something that you can do, and this is something that I learned through physical therapy, is take a take a small like two gallon bucket or a five gallon bucket if you really want to and if, if you have a weak hand or you just want to strengthen your the muscles in your hand is if, if you fill like a five gallon bucket or just a couple, you know, kind of milk jug off, whatever, um, and fill it up with sand, and you just like, you sit there and watch TV and you stick your hand in that bucket, and all you do is, you know, open your hand as far as you can, close your hand, open your hand. It just gives a nice resistance, um, and just sort of like move your fingers around and everything like that. That's a really nice way to evenly build up like muscle in your hand. And, I know you're probably thinking, well, that's Bill. That's just crazy. But I've had to go through it with this arm to try to, to try to mitigate it, make it as strong as possible in in certain areas, so that I could continue trying to live my life here. Um, but it's something that with originally with this hand, I, I couldn't do it with sand. It was too much resistance and everything, and uh, you know my my issues were pretty substantial. So I, what I started with was tumbling media. Um, clean tumbling media. You don't want to use dirty tumbling media. Your hands will get all nasty. But if you want to use tumbling media, that's another good way to do it, like walnut shell, you know. And uh, it actually cleans your fingers and stuff, which is kind of nice. So your uh, your hands come out all fancy and clean. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to mention, and this is something that comes up all the time. We were at the range the other day, and I let a guy dry fire my gun. I'm like, you want to dry fire this before you fire it. Trust me, because my triggers are, are, are light on my competition guns. Um, or guns that I have for just sporting purposes, and he's, oh, I don't feel comfortable doing that. You can do it. 
If it's a 1911, and I will speak specifically to Rock Island 1911s, although there's lots of other things I can talk about, uh, you can dry fire the heck out of that weapon in a safe direction. I do it all the time to get used to my trigger, to practice my breathing, to watch my sights. I didn't even pull the trigger, did I? But, uh, you know, obviously I'm a, I'm a little canted here. I'm sitting and my weak hand does really alter my firing position, being a right eye dominant, left handed now shooter. But you will not damage this firearm by dry firing it. You can dry fire it all day, every day, and you're not going to hurt it. Uh, if it's a rim fire gun, yeah, you, you could. Um, just because of the nature of rim fire, that that firing pin's actually striking a hard piece of steel to smush that rim that would normally be there. But in the case of a center fire gun, you're not going to hurt it. So dry fire away, practice it safely, uh, make sure that the gun's always in a safe direction, and if you have kids or you have uh, you know, people around or whatever, just make sure you show them the gun's clear, you know, explain gun safety and, and, and go into all that. Um, because it is important to make sure that everybody knows that what you're doing is, is a safe activity. So, you know, and, and for me, I, I dry fire a lot because I can't always get to the range. I don't always have the time. I don't always have the uh, ability or the weather to make it out there. But dry firing is a great practice. And, uh, you know, it's something that, that I recommend doing a lot of. So those are some of my frequently asked questions for right now of uh, things that have come up at the range or via email or whatever but uh, thank goodness it's getting warm out because now we can get out and do some shooting videos so take care and uh, practice lots go throw some brass